Hello and welcome back to the optional lessons dito sa data representation tracks sa pangkarniwan developer. In this lesson, we're going to discuss two of the more common bases na may kita nyo when you're dealing with computers, when you're dealing with programs, yung octal and hexadecimal. Octal is basically base 8 and hexadecimal is base 16. Yung base 8, hindi naman siya ganong problematic. Malalaman nyo naman yan. That's just 0 to 7. Pagdating ng 8, magiging 1, 0 na siya. Yung hexadecimal, kulang tayo ng symbols dito sa decimal system natin. Hanggang 0 to 9 lang tayo. Kaya for base 16, we're going to have to add 6 more symbols. Para dun sa ating 10 to 15. So for that, we're using yung letters natin. From A to F. In some cases, may kita nyo siya capitalized. In other cases, they're not capitalized. Pero, they're interchangeable. Ang point lang is, dun sa ating hexadecimal, yung mga symbols na wala tayo, yung 10 to 15, that's made up of letters, A to F. Normally, pag dinidiscuss tong octal at hexadecimal, sinasabi lang na base 8 at base 16 sila. Ang problema dun, hindi na nalaman ng student kung Ano yung rason bakit dinidiscuss to? Parang, yun niya, parang dating lang sa kanya, parang FYI lang. Sa totoo lang, may rason bakit ginagamit ang base 8 at base 16, yung octal at hexadecimal sa mga computers natin. And that reason is, kung gumagamit ka ng octal and hexadecimal, mas madali mong marirepresent ang binary information. Kasi ang problema sa binary, yes, madali siyang i-store sa memory natin, sa storage natin, or whatever. Pero pagdating sa pagsusulat sa kanya, in writing or in display, masyadong maraming space siyang tinitake up. So with octal and hexadecimal, we have more human-friendly representations para dito sa ating binary information na yun. So in short, parang shortcut sila, shorthand, abbreviation sila ng binary information. So yun, may rason bakit ginagamit siya, hindi lang basta-basta parang tinopak yung computer science teacher mo na kailangan nyo matutunan yung 8 at 16 at magpakahirap kayo mag-convert, mag-divide kayo continuously na 16 at mahirap gawin yun. So yun, may reason talaga siya. So let's give some examples saan ginagamit yung octal and hexadecimal dito sa IT, dito sa mga computers natin or sa digital devices natin. For octal, in my experience, isang lugar lang talaga ginagamit yung octal na practically speaking. That is yung sa file permissions natin. So, in some file systems, mostly Unix-based, gaya ng Linux sa Mac, yung mga files natin, meron siyang certain permissions. So, yung file natin can be executable, pwede siyang mapatakbo, kunwari yung mga programs natin, pwede siyang masulat at pwede siyang mabasa. So, yun yung mga text files natin. So, a file can have any combination of that. Pwede siyang executable, writable, or readable, or pwede, hindi siya pwede sa lahat. Or any combination. And in addition, itong settings sa to, itong permissions sa to, can be set for the current user, for the current group of the user, and for everyone else dun sa gumagamit ng computer natin. So, yun yun. Meron tayong... Essentially, nine combinations ng possibilities. So, executable, writable, and readable for the user, for the group, and for the other. So, let's give an example. So, for example, meron tayong isang executable shell na file, yung dummy.sh. Kung readable and writable and executable siya na lahat, pwede na yun iset. On the other hand, readme.txt, isang text file lang yan, most likely hindi yan executable. And most likely, readable siya ng lahat. But, pwede na siya i-limit yung writing sa kanya para lang dun sa current user. So, to represent that in binary, we could represent that na tig isang bit lang sila. So, yun. Minensyon na nga natin yun. 9 bits ang kailangan mo. And, for dummy that shell, that's lahat 1. Kasi lahat, executable, read, writable, and readable. Then, that's for all types of users. On the other hand, yung readme.txt, ano yan, 110, that's for the current user, that's readable and writable. 
then yung for everyone else, that's just readable. So in first bit, that's the readable. Second bit, that's the writable. The last bit is executable. Pag ginamit natin octal rito, mas compact yung may kita natin na representation. Starting out with 111111111. Pag kinonvert natin yan sa octal, yung readable, that would be yung 4. Yung writable, that would be yung 2. Yung executable, that would be yung 1. Dun sa ating binary. Pag kinonvert natin sa octal, magiging 777 na lang siya. So, lumit yung 9 characters natin to down to 3 characters. The same way, yung ating 9 characters na to would be compact into 644. And yun yun. Mas compact na notation for file permissions yung octal. So, bago tayo mag-proceed dun sa ibang uses ng hexadecimal at octal, magbigay lang tayo ng other examples para dito sa file permission na octal notation. Much later, when you're dealing with files, kung wari nag-set up na ng web server or whatever, ito yung dalawa yung may kita madalas na file permissions. First is for a public file. Itong public file na to, pwedeng mabasa at pwedeng ma-execute ng lahat ng mga users dun sa current na computer nyo for some some reason, pero ayaw nyo siyang pa write sa ibang mga users, may gamit nyo dyan is 755. So, when you're installing, say, WordPress, may sasabihin sa'yo, set mo lahat ng files rito sa folder na to, sa directory na to, as 755. Okay? So, another example is yung private file. Gusto mong ikaw lang pwede magbasa nun at ikaw lang pwede magsulat nun and wala kang balak ipatakbuhin yung file na yun. For example, mga private keys mo, and some other private stuff na ayaw mong mapagamit sa ibang users sa current computer, ang bibigay mong file permission dyan is 600. That's only readable and writable but not executable and for everyone else, hindi siya na mabasa. Okay, so yun lang yun. Sa Octal, currently, ginagamit lang talaga siya file permission. There are other uses pero special cases na yun eh. Hindi mo rin magamit yun sa pangaraw-araw. Anyway, let's proceed dun sa hexadecimal. Sa hexadecimal, mas use siya kaysa sa octal kasi ang 4 bits, nag-fit siya dun sa concept ng word size natin. So, word size is the smallest addressable size of data sa ating mga computers that's limited by processors. And kadalasan, yun niya, dahil byte natin is 8 bytes and hexadecimal is 4 bits, you can represent any byte by just 2 hexadecimal digits, madalas siya talagang gamitin. So, let's give some examples na ginagamit yung hexadecimal. First is yung sa colors natin. Sa mga computers, there are cases na pwede kang mag-define na isang color and you can separate it in red, blue, and green. Depende sa shades na gusto mo sa kanya. So, a pretty common way of representing this is using one byte for each of the colors, nung sa red, blue, and green. So, you have 256 shades of red, that's 1 byte, 0 to 255, and same for blue and green. So, for example, if you have colors red, uh, so maximum siya dun sa red, everything else wala. So, dun sa other color, gaya ng turquoise, that's a lot of blue and a lot of green para pumuti siya. Then, finally, yung gray, halfway point. So, that's representing it using decimal. Kung rinipresent mo siya in hexadecimal, you could just use two hexadecimal digits. Kasi nga, 0 to 255 is 0 to FF. Dun sa ating hexadecimal. So, yung colors sa pinakita naan kanina, pag nakikita mo yan sa mga web pages, pag may mga web designer, siniset nila yung part ng page or yung text into a certain color, gamit nila yung hex digit. So, from 255.00 is just yung sharp symbol natin, yung pound symbol natin, followed by yung hex digits. So, that's FF000. Dun sa ating HTML, CSS, may shortcut yun. Kailangan lang isa gagamitin mo, i-double na niya kaagad yun. So, pwede uh, sharp F00 or pounds F00. Same thing with the rest. 
So, yun. We represent yung ating colors with just six hexadecimal digits. So, that's just one example for the use of hexadecimal. Another example for using hexadecimal is paano tayo nagre-represent ng binary data. Yan naman pinagsasabi na kanina pa na use ng octal and hexadecimal. So, with hexadecimal, yung binary data na yun, compress natin by four characters. So, if you, say, dump the contents of a file, so this is an image file, a PNG file, yung git ng column, yung mga separated in four hexadecimal digits, yun yung actual na data. Yung sa right side, yun yung translation niya. Yung left side, yun lang parang yung address niya, kung kano kalayo ka na dun sa file. So, this is a hex dump of a binary file. Yan, yan. You could view yung ating binary data in a much more compact form. Yan yung uh, probably the main use talaga ng hexadecimal when it comes to computers. Anyway, let's proceed dun sa side effect of learning kung ano yung... Uh, Rason, bakit gumagamit tayo ng octal at hexadecimal, which is paano ka nagko-convert between binary and dun sa octal and hexadecimal natin. Again, keep in mind na octal and hexadecimal are shorthand. So, pag tinuro ng teacher ninyo na para mag-convert ka between binary and octal, binary and hexadecimal, kailangan mong dumaan sa decimal, mali siya. Hindi mo kailangan magdaan sa decimal para mag-convert between the three number basis. Kasi nga, short and sila eh. There's shortcut talaga. So, itong process na to, this is wrong. Please don't do this. May mas madaling approach kaysa rito. So, ito yung mas madaling approach. First, alalahan niyo yung conversion table. Kung hindi niyo yan naalala, madali lang yan gawin by hand. Then, when you've got this, madali na siyang i-convert. Kasi from binary, Kung gusto mo siyang i-convert to octal, you just split it to threes. Same thing with hexadecimal, split that into four bits. Then from each, convert mo lang using your conversion table. So you 100, that would be 4, you 0, 0, 1, that would be 1, and so on. Makuha mo na yung octal. Same thing with hexadecimal, yung 1, 0, 0, 0, that's just 8. Then, yung 0, 1, 0, 0, that's 4. Then, 1, 1, 0, 1, that's just D. So, yun na yun. Hindi mo na kailangan mag-divide, hindi mo na kailangan mag-multiply, and mag-add. Kasi, based dun sa binary, mapipiece together mo na kung ano yung mga digits dun sa target mong base. Same thing pagpabaliktad. Say, meron kang hexadecimal, convert mo lang each digit 2 dun sa binary na yun. So, EBB2A354, kunin mo yung E, value nyan is 1110, yung B, 1011, and so on. Sa octal, ganun rin. Yung 5, magiging 101, yung 0, magiging 000, and so on. So, yun lang. Convert each digit 2 dun sa binary nya based dun sa ginawa mong conversion table. And finally, kung gusto mo mag-convert between hexadecimal to octal or octal to hexadecimal, ang gagamitin mong panggit na sa kanila is yung binary. So first, yung hexadecimal, convert mo muna siya to binary. Then yung binary na yun, simula ka sa kanan, split mo ito to thirds, then convert mo siya to octal. In some cases, gaya nito, kakaroon kayo ng butal na zero. Hindi mo na kailangan yan kasi zero lang naman yan. Hindi naman significant digit na yan. Discard nyo na lang yun dun sa pinakalawang zero na yan. But ito, this is far more faster than yung sinasabi nila na convert mo muna to decimals so o multiply ka. Then mag-date ko, continuous division ka. Mabagal yun. And yun lang. Huwag na huwag nyo gagawin to. Kung kailangan nyo gawin to, unahin nyo muna yung daya. At least you have a way to confirm na tama yung ginawa nyo. Pero in reality, wala tong wala tong kwenta itong approach na to. It doesn't make sense kasi yung ating octal and hexadecimal are there to make things more convenient for you. And kung pinapahirapan ka niya, walang point eh. So yun, next lesson, we proceed dun sa paano tayo nag-add, subtract, multiply, divide in other number bases.